Today we are going to start the article uh, 8.3, the properties of the root locus. In the last class, we have seen that uh, the poles uh, for a particular pole, whether uh, uh, for a particular transfer function for camera security system, how the poles changes uh, with the change in the uh, system parameter k. And, uh, and we also have seen that uh, closed loop transfer function. Okay, so we, we figured out the function, the value of any function fs at any particular value s tends to sigma plus j omega. So we figure out what is the magnitude of that? Uh, what is the value of the function at that particular point, m theta? Okay, so we, we have seen uh, how to calculate this. But today we are going to see what is the condition that is needed for any particular point to be on the root locus. So we know how to figure out the value of any function at any particular point in the S plane from this formula. So today what we are going to see that if S equal to sigma plus J omega is a point in the root uh, point in the S plane, then whether this point is on the root locus or not. Root locus or not. So this is what we are going to see. So we are going to figure out what is the condition required for any point to be on the root locus. Okay, so for that we have to take the help of the closed loop transfer function again. So T of S equal to K G of S, which is the forward path transfer function plus uh, divided by one plus forward path transfer function K G of S H of S. Okay, so the denominator is our characteristic equation. So we are more interested about the denominator and what is uh, one plus k g of s h of s has to be equal to zero. Okay, then we can find out what, uh, what are the poles of the system we have and based on the location of the pole, we can predict the behavior of the system, whether it will be uh, uh, over damped, under damped, critically damped or oscillatory. Okay, so from this one, we can find that K, G of S, H of S has to be equal to minus one. Now this is, now this is our function that we are talking about. So the function is, uh, this may be our F of S. So value of the function, at any particular point has to be, because this is a vector uh, polar form, so we have to be, have to have both m and theta. So basically, m here is the magnitude has to be one, and the angle here has to be twice k plus one, 180 degrees. Twice k plus one is nothing but odd multiple. So basically, any odd multiple, multiple of 180 degree will make the value negative one. Okay, so uh, I think it's, it's common sense because of the fact that if it is even multiple of 180 degree, then we are actually here. Okay, so value is plus one. And uh, if it is odd multiple, then we are here. So the value will be minus one. Okay, so this is a very simple condition. The magnitude value has to be one and the angle value has to be odd multiple of 180 degrees. So whether it is true uh, in case of the example that we have seen in the last class, 
uh, security camera system. Camera system. Okay, so for the security camera system, what was our KG of S, H of S? K, G of S, H of S was simply, if you can recall the last class, then we had something like this. K, G of S was there. And in the feedback, we have actually unity feedback. So basically, it was one. Okay, so and what was our G of S? G of, uh, K G of S was nothing but K divided by S into S plus 10. That's the last class. Okay, so, okay, so this was the uh, system in the last class, security camera system, K G of S, H of S was simply K divided by S into S plus 10. So now uh, try to prove whether the uh, route that we have calculated, they follow the condition or not. That means uh, this condition is followed or not. So this is what we have to figure out. So one of the example was uh, one of the point for which we have calculated the poles was K equal to five. And that was giving us two point. One of the point was actually uh, S equal to minus 9.472. Okay, so try to put these two value into our kg of s, h of s, our function. So what we are going to get here is k is five, then minus 9.472 into uh, minus 9.472 plus 10. Okay, so what we are going to get is minus 0.996. Okay, so you actually have taken the truncated value here. That is why it is not becoming one, but it is very close to one. Okay, so we can say that our magnitude is one as well as our angle is 180 degree. So uh, you, you can try for each and every point on the table, table 8.1, to check whether this condition of magnitude and angle, which is minus one or one twice k plus one, 180 degrees fulfilled or not. Okay, so practice. I have just shown one example with real pole. You can also verify it with the complex pole as well. Now, what is mean by this? Another example we have in a unity feedback system again. Okay, so K S plus three, S plus four. So we have two zero at uh, minus three and minus four. And we have two uh, poles at S plus one and S plus two. And this is also unity feedback system. So we are not bothered about the total system. You can figure out what will be uh, the TS, the closed loop transfer function, but we are actually more interested about the open loop one. Okay, so we are interested about this function, K, G of S, H of S. So K, G of S, H of S is uh, nothing but, H of S is one. So this function K, S plus three, S plus four, um, S plus one, S plus two. Okay, so, uh, say that you have any particular point uh, you want to figure out whether that is on the root locus or not. So they have given S equal to minus two plus J three. So this point, whether it is on the root locus or not, this is what you have to figure out. So what is our condition? The condition is 
we have to find out the value of the function the value of the function at this particular point s tends to minus 2 plus j uh, j3 then we have to check whether the magnitude is 1 and whether the angle is y k plus 1 180 degrees that is odd multiple of 1 so uh, in our case kg of fs is nothing but kg of s h of s i'm repeating uh, the same thing again and again so that it becomes easier for you okay so let us draw the diagram here so say s plane okay Let's say this is a one, two, three, four. Similarly, one, two, three. We have two zeros, one zero here at minus four, or minus three, minus two, minus one. We have one zero here and one zero here. And we have two poles at minus two and minus one. And the point that is given to us is somewhere here. So which is minus two plus J three. So we have to figure out whether this uh, point is on the root locus or not. So for that we have to draw the line Okay, so just allow me to draw by hand. Uh, they may not be perfect, but if we use the ruler, then it takes time. Okay, so it has to be straight line downwards and something like this. Okay, let's assume that this is okay. So basically, whether the question number one, whether we should go for the magnitude condition first or the angle condition. So to that, uh, actually you have to go for the angle condition first. So we have to figure out the theta first. So if the theta is mm, twice k plus one, 180 degrees, then we can go for the uh, magnitude condition. The magnitude, we know that magnitude has to be one. So if the magnitude is one, then from that one condition, that means magnitude is k, g of s, h of s, uh, equal to one. Okay, so from that one, we have to figure out what is the value of k. So k will be one by g of s, h of s. Okay, so let us derive the whole thing here. So in the last class, we have seen that uh, g of s, h of s was nothing but a, a function we talked in the last class, okay? So uh, that was actually product of the pole lengths, sorry, product of the zero lengths, okay? So product of the zero lengths to the product of the pole lengths. Okay. So now since it is 1 by g of s h of s, so basically it will be 1 by m. So basically it will be inverted. So product of pole lengths by product of zero lengths. Is it okay? So we are actually interested about finding out first of all from the angle condition that whether the point is on the root locus or not. So basically whether it is odd multiple of 180 degree or not. If it is true, then we try to figure out for which value of K this is on the root locus. Because if the values of the K is change, then it will be no longer on the root locus. Okay, so the, some other point will be coming on under the root locus. So, so based on this, let us find out the angle here. So we are calling this one theta one, this one theta two, 
this is theta three 90 degree. So we, are, we don't have to calculate that, but still theta three. This is theta four. So we have to figure out what is theta. So theta a equal to zero lens minus the whole lens. So basically theta one plus theta two, which is the zero lens, uh, sorry, zero angles minus theta three or pole angles minus theta four. So what is theta one? Theta one is 10 inverse height. Height is basically three. So 10 inverse three by the distance here is actually two. From here to here, the distance is two. So three by two plus for the second point here, for the second point here, it will be 10 inverse. Height is always same, three by one. Then minus 90 degree, we don't have to calculate the theta three. Then minus, it is easier to calculate this angle instead of theta. So basically we are going to write 180 degree minus 10 inverse height, height is three divided by the base, base is one. So what we are getting here is 56.56.3099 degrees plus 71.57 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 108.435 degrees. So the summation is minus 70.5551. So this is no way closer to minus or plus 180 degree. So basically that particular point minus two plus J3 cannot be, cannot be on the root locus. So if the point is not on the root locus, so there is no point of figuring out the value of the K. Okay, so this is how you have to do it. So check the angle condition first. If the angle condition is verified, then you can go for the Magnitude. So let us take one example that uh, for which the angular condition will be verified so that actually we can find out what should be the value of k. So same, same example here, but they are saying another point. The point is s equal to minus 2 plus j 0.707. So somewhere tentatively somewhere here. Okay. So now again, you have to draw the line for this one. Okay, so this one is remaining as it is, and then you have to draw the line from this one as well. Sorry about those bad drawings. Now, theta this time, what will be the theta? Theta will be again theta one. We're just keeping the name same theta one plus theta two minus theta three minus theta four. So this time 10 inverse, uh, height is basically 0 0.707, 0 0.707 divided by two plus 10 inverse 0 0.707 divided by one, similar to the previous one, minus 90 degree, minus 180 degree, minus 10 inverse 0 0.70, 707 divided by one. Okay, so what we are going to get here is 19.468 uh, plus 35.260 minus 90 minus, uh, I'm just writing the final one, so 144.74. So eventually, if you calculate that, then you are going to get is minus 180.012.
which is very close to minus 1 if you will. Okay, so this, uh, as I already said, this uh, small uh, deviation from actual value is because of the fact that all these values are actually truncated value. So we have taken up to maybe three digit after the decimal. Okay, so the, for the point. So basically, that is why we, we have this kind of small deviation. So, but it will never be 175 or 185, so nothing. But it will be around 180, 179 range. Okay, so now we can tell that this particular value uh, of S is equal to minus two plus J uh, 7, uh, 0.707 is actually on the root locus. So now if it is on the root locus, then now we can go for the magnitude condition. So what is the magnitude? So magnitude this time, we know that uh, the condition is altered. So the for, because we are finding the value of the K, so K will be basically uh, pole lens divided by zero lens. So now if you let us define the pole and the zero lens here, say this is M1, this length is M1, the, this one is M2, this is M3, and this is M4. So M1, M2 is the zero length and M3 and M4 is the pole length. So our formula says here is uh, pole length divided by pole length divided by the zero length. So what we are going to get here is M3 into M4, the pole length divided by zero length. Zero length is M1 into M2. So what is M3? Just apply the Pythagoras. So if you apply the Pythagoras, then what are you going to get M3 is, uh, the base is actually two. So Uh, sorry, M3. For M3, uh, you don't have to do any calculation because of the fact that uh, 2 is directly uh, on the horizontal axis. Okay, so basically, what we are going to get here is directly the magnitude. So magnitude is 0 0.707. So only the vertical length. Okay, so 0 0.707. Now M, M4. M4 is uh, horizontal distance is 1 and vertical distance is 0.7 zeros. Vertical distance is always the same. So Pythagoras you have to apply. One square plus 0 0.707 square. Similarly for, M3, uh, for M1, we are going to see that the vertical distance is same, horizontal distance is two. So two square plus 0 0.707 square. Okay, so multiplication, so multiplication. Okay. So it is also the same magnitude, one square plus 0 0.707 square. Okay, so what we, 0 0.707 square is almost uh, 0.5. Okay, so we can write something like this. Or even it doesn't make any difference. These two are getting cancelling each other. So what is left is uh, 0 0.707 divided by this is root over 4.5 root over approximately 4.5. Okay. So this is the value that we are going to get. The value is almost 0 0.333. Is it okay? So what we are doing here, very simple idea. First of all, check whether the point is on the root locus or not. If the point is on the root locus, then try to figure out the gain. And gain is uh, previously what we find M is just invert of it. Previously, the magnitude we calculated zero lens divided by the pole lens. Now here K, since it is one by uh, the function, so it is uh, pole lens divided by the zero lens. Okay, so now we'll go to the next article. So article 8.4 is basically sketching the root locus. Sketching the root locus. 
so this topic is important because this actually will allow you to draw the root locus without a very complicated calculation so actually we want to uh, avoid the calculation we want to graphically represent the poles without doing too much calculation and getting the informations like stability transient behavior something like this so this is a uh, simple five rule we are going to discuss here simple five rule to draw the root locus five rule okay so uh, the complicated ones i will not derive in this class maybe I, at the end of this chapter i'll derive that but we are just going to explain the rules today and we'll try to uh, implement it uh, on any transfer function to see how the how to actually plot the root locus without involving too much calculation. Okay, so the rule number one is how many branches there should be on the root locus. So rule one is number of branches. Number of branches. Okay, so the formula is very simple. So number of finite root poles or zeros, which one is higher? That many number of branches will be there. So say G of S, K, G of S, H of S, having something like this. Say S plus two, S plus seven, S plus nine, okay. So S plus three, S plus one. So here, which one is higher? Number of the zero is higher. So you have three zero, two pole. So which one is higher? That many number of segment will be there. So this uh, root locus of this uh, function will have three branches. So, but if you have something like this, say this one is not present, uh, sorry, not intending to highlight. Okay, so, so this is your transfer function. Now how many uh, branches it will have? Now the number of the pole is higher. So basically this will have two branches. So it will be the number of the branches will be equal to number of finite so finite poles or zeros, which one is higher? Is it okay? So number of the poles or finite poles is zero. So since we're saying finite, so there may be some infinite, something will be also coming later. I okay, will look, at, look into that one as well. Now, uh, rule number two, this is fairly simple, the rule number one. So rule number two is symmetry. Okay, so your root locus will be symmetrical about the real axis. So it says symmetrical. about the real axis. So actually it makes sense because of the fact that complex poles come in complex conjugate, isn't it? So if you have a pole here and you also have a pole here. So the complex, they come in complex conjugate. So if your root locus, just like the last class camera security system, you have seen that one was actually going up and the other ones were going down. So they're actually uh, symmetrical about the real axis. Okay, so rule two is also not that complicated. Then you have rule three. Rule three is real axis segments real axis segments.
Okay, so the formula is the segment, real axis segment that is left to the odd number of poles and zeros. So that is on the root locus. So that the real axis segment that is on the left side of the odd numbers of, of poles and zero, zeros, that will be on the root locus. So what is mean by that? So this is say uh, your root locus, uh, sorry, real axis. Okay, uh, this is your real axis. This is your imaginary axis. You have maybe a pole here, a pole here, a zero here, a pole here, a pole here, a zero here. Okay, so maybe your system is not a good one. It is not a stable one. So you can have something like this. Okay, so what it says, the segment. So I actually define the segment first. So this is one segment. Okay, this is another segment. This is another segment. This is another segment. Between the poles, we have the segments. So these are the total segments of this one. Now, they are saying that the segment that is actually having odd number of pole zero to the left side is on the root locus. So, now this segment, the first segment here, the segment one, how many pole zero have in the left side? Uh, nothing, no pole zero. So basically we can say that zero can be considered as an even number, even though it is not a number at all because of the fact continuity. So zero, one, two. So well, alternatively, the odd and even number is coming. So there is for simplicity, zero is also as an even number. So this segment is not on the root locus. Now, what about the next segment? So this segment has one pole to the left. So this segment has to be on the root locus. So this segment is on the root locus. So what about the next segment? Next segment has two pole zero, so two of them. This one as well as this one, so two, two even numbers. So this one can also not be on the root locus. Next segment, next segment has, this one has three of them. So one, two, three. So this segment has to be on the root locus. So basically alternatively, alternative segments will be on the root locus. This one, this one, as well as this one. So is it clear? The segments that has a odd number of pole zeros to the uh, left side, that segment uh, in our diagram, the red ones, red segments are actually, are on the root locus because it has odd number of pole zeros uh, uh, to the left side. So this is uh, your rule number four, three, now rule number four. So rule number four, what it says is uh, starting and the ending points. Starting and ending points. So from where this uh, the root locus will be uh, originated and to where it will be terminated. So starting and the ending point we have to figure out. Okay, so let's uh, write the equation that we have derived in the last class t of s equal to k uh, numerator of g of s okay so uh, the numerator of g of s that means zeros of g of s 
numerator of g of s and the denominator of h of s divided by uh, denominator of g of s denominator of h of s plus k numerator of g of s and numerator of h of s. Uh, this is the equation that we have in the last case. So now if the value of k, because we said that we are plotting for k equal to zero to k equal to infinity. Okay, starting point is k equal to zero and the ending point is k equal to infinity. Now in this equation, if we put k equal to very, very small or very, very close to zero, okay, so tends to zero, then we can write that kt of s equal to uh, k ngs dhs plus uh, divided by dgs dhs plus because if you multiply these two with the small value of k it will be very small so basically we are starting from this two so these two are nothing but poles of g of s poles of g of s h of s now if k tends to infinity then what is happening to the ts we cannot directly apply this infinity to this equation so what we are going to do is we divide both this uh, new numerator and the denominator numerator and the denominator by k okay so if you divide it so what will happen this k k again cancel out this one is also cancelling out so what is left is only this term is divided by k so if k is infinity one by infinity is zero so what is left with is you can also say zero or very small then you have ngs and nhs numerator of g of s and numerator of the, the top is remaining ngs dhs so what you can see actually we are ending up to the zeros of g of s and h of s so what is our starting location starting is poles of g of s h of s and we are terminating at zeros of h of s and g of s and h of s so this is the starting and the ending point starting from the poles finishing at zeros now in this diagram so this segment is on the root locus this segment is on the root locus okay so uh, this segment is on the root locus so what should be the location direction then it will be starting from pole and it will be terminating to zero so this is your direction so uh, at, at this point k equal to zero at this point actually k equal to infinity similarly here as well starting from pole going to zero so basically this should be the direction what about this segment here? So starting from pole, terminating to zero. So this should be the segment. Now, what will happen to these two? Hmm. These two eventually, it doesn't have any uh, zero isn't it both of them are pole so what will happen to them is they will uh, merge together okay and then they will try to go towards the infinity somewhere to figure out its partner similarly for this one this is uh, this will be the direction this will be the direction this is because this is originating from uh, the Poles. Now this is a zero and this segment is on the root locus. So it will be terminating at this one, but it doesn't have a partner somewhere here. So we are assuming that at infinity, there is a pole at infinity. And from where 
uh, this root locus is coming. Is it okay? So that actually leads us starting from pole and terminating to zero. So some of the pole will be terminating, some of the finite pole will be terminating to finite zero. And some of the unlucky pole and the zero who doesn't have a partner in the real axis, they will look at uh, the infinity to figure out its partner. Okay, so, so that, sir, will they find their partner in the infinity? Sorry? Sir, will they find their partner in the infinity? Yes, of course. They will find their partner at infinity. Okay, let me explain to the next point that it will be more clear. So your rule four, five is actually behavior at infinity. Rule five, behavior. at infinity. Okay, so those of you don't have a partner in this world, so they may, they may be upset, but don't get upset. They are waiting somewhere at the infinity for you. If, if this is in this world, that's good. If it is not, then in the hereafter, inshallah. Okay, so First of all, as we already say, if the number of the, if the function k, g of s, h of s is having equal number of pole and zeros, say k, uh, one of the examples that we have seen, s plus three, s plus four, and then s, sorry, s plus one divided by s plus two, one, two. So now we have two pole, two zero. So they will eventually, uh, one pole will be going to one zero, while another pole will be going to another zero. So it's easy. But what happens if you have some other function, something like this, k g of s, h of s, uh, equal to something like this. K s, s plus one, s plus two. Now, as you can see, they have a three finite pole we have, but we have no finite zero. So first question of the behavior of the infinity is how many infinite lines? So number of infinite line. So number of the infinite line formula is very simple. Number of finite poles, finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Is it okay? So not necessarily always the pole will be higher, but in general pole is higher. So I think it will be better to replace the minus sign with the tilde sign. Okay, so whichever is higher. So you subtract from one from the another. So that many number of infinite lines should be there. So in this example, how many infinite line? Two minus two, so there will be no infinite line. In this example, how many infinite line? So basically three minus zero. So basically three infinite lines should be there. Now, how they will behave? Like uh, here, you may be asking that why I have drawn a, a path like this. Why not? Well, just like the last example, last uh, class example, why not up and down? So this, to find out the behavior at the infinity, you should know that there should be some guiding lines for those poles and zeros that are actually going to infinity or coming from infinity. And those guiding lines are known as asymptotes. So asymptotic lines will be there. So the guiding lines uh, through which the, the poles or the zeros that are actually going towards the infinity or coming from infinity, they will be guided by these lines. And these lines are defined by the two parameter. One is called real axis intercept 
or actually center. Okay, so also you can replace it, by, you can also call the center of the asymptotes. So that is called sigma A. And the formula is given is uh, summation of the finite poles minus summation of finite zeros. Finite zeros divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Don't worry, I will explain what, what actually they mean with an example. So this is the center of the asymptote or the, for the location from which the asymptote will generate. And also the angle we have to know, angle theta A is actually twice K plus one into pi or multiple of 180 degree divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Okay. So in the last example, what we, what we have seen in this example here, so we want to figure out what is the center. So center, you can figure out whatever the value we have here. So this is at minus one, this is at minus two, and this is at zero. So you can write also zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, uh, minus uh, one, and minus two. Summation of that, and there is no zero. So divided by, uh, this is actually uh, how many pole you have finite polar? Three minus zero. So basically, what you have minus three by three, actually your uh, location will get, uh, the center will get minus one. And what about the angle? Angle is also twice k plus one pi divided by three minus zero is three. So basically twice k plus one pi by three. Is it okay? So twice k plus one pi by three. So if k equal to zero, then you have, how many uh, lines you have? First of all, three lines, isn't it? So that is where k equal to zero, k equal to one and k equal to two we're going to take. So this will give you pi by three. This will give you pi. This will give you five pi by three. As this is nothing but 60 degree. This is nothing but 180 degree. And this is nothing but 300 degrees. So this is actually what we have drawn here. So we have an actually arbitrarily, arbitrarily draw, uh, drawn the lines because we know that these two doesn't have a, a real partner. So they have a imaginary infinity partner. And this one is also having infinity partner. So one will be so 60 degree. So one guiding line will be 180 degree. And the other guiding line will be 300 degree or minus 60 degree. Okay, so you can take it, the angle from here. So basically it will be 300 degrees. So that is why we haven't gone up and down. Rather, we know that there will be three infinite lines. So three guiding lines, one will be 60 degree, one will be 180 degree, and then the other one will be 300 degrees. Okay, so these are the five basic rules. Now, let us apply these rules on one example. So say example uh, 8.2. Example 8.2. So I'm not drawing the block diagram, just writing the, fine, uh, the equation of concern or the function of concern that is a g of s h of s, and which is nothing but k s plus three divided by s s plus one s plus two and s plus four. Okay, so this is the function that has been given and you have to plot the root locus. 
So first of all, we have to figure out how many branches this root logger should have. So number of the branches. So number of branches. What is the formula? Which one is higher? So we have one zero. We have one zero and four poles. So which is higher? Pole is higher. So there should be four branches of your root blockers. How many infinite lines should be there? Number of infinite lines. Infinite lines is finite pole minus finite pole zero. That is four minus one. So basically three infinity lines should be there. So uh, that lead us to figure out the value of the real axis intercept that is sigma sigma a. So sigma a is summation of the poles that is minus zero, minus one, minus two, minus four, then minus minus three. You have a zero at minus three. Then you have finite pole minus zero, so four minus one. So basically, uh, denominator you have three, and the numerator you have three, three getting cancelled, so minus four. So basically minus 1.33 is your uh, location of your center of your asymptotes. And angle of the asymptotes, same as before, it will not change because three infinite line. So basically it will be twice, K plus one. I'm writing again, but it's remaining same. Only the difference is here, you have four minus one. So basically twice K plus one, then you have pi by three. So K equal to zero will give you again 60 degrees and K equal to one. Not necessarily you have to take K equal to all positive number. K can be zero plus minus one plus minus two. So if you take the minus sign, in that case, actually, you have to take a clockwise direction of the angle. Okay, so this is 180 degree, and this is k equal to two, you are going to have 300 degrees. So we know most of the thing now, let us try to draw the root locus. Okay, so... Sorry about that. So this is what we have. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is uh, four is enough, okay. So now I'll extend it further. Okay, so uh, plus the pole and zero. So we have a pole here, pole here, pole here, then you have a zero here, then you have a pole here. So real axis segments we have to figure out. So which segment will be on the root locus? This segment will be on the root locus. This segment will be on the root locus. And this segment will be on the root locus. Okay, so real axis segment. I think formula three. No, formula four, starting and the ending point. So it says that it will always start from the pole and it will be terminated to zero. So there is only one lucky pole, this one, is having its partner in this world, the real axis. So this is the lucky one. Now what about other three, they have to find their partner at infinity. 
and the guiding line, the center is at minus 1.33, and the guiding lines are actually 60 degree, 180 degree, and 300 degree. So somewhere here, actually, we have one uh, minus 1.33, somewhere here. So maybe 60 degree guiding line is there. Uh, uh, this is your 180 degree guiding line, and this is your 300 degree guiding line. So for this pole, it is relatively simple. It will try to find its uh, partner at infinity. And some of you ask whether it will get it partner. Yes, we are hopeful that the hereafter we actually have our partners. So at infinity, you have your uh, partner there. What about this two? So these two actually at k equal to zero, they'll start from this location and this location. And the asymptotes are actually finally how they are going to behave, okay? So at the beginning, it may not follow exactly. So what will happen? It will start from there. They will be merging towards each other. At some point, they'll be meeting. And then one of them will be going upwards. Sorry. Uh, actually, the angle here. Okay. So they will be merging. Uh, sorry. They will be merging together. Okay, so uh, at some point they will be going, then they will start actually uh, uh, leave the plus vertically initially, then it will try to follow that curve or that line, asymptotic line. Initially it will start, then uh, it will follow something like this. So how to know initially how it is going to start? For that we have some other rules. So that is actually article 8.5 refining the rules, refining the root locus, that is a article 8.5. So from which point they are actually leaving, all these can be figured out and how they'll be leaving this, uh, at which angle they'll be leaving and how they eventually will be merging with uh, those lines. So they're, they're actually guiding lines. They'll never cross the line, so it cannot go like this. So eventually they will always be at the, whenever it is approaching infinity. So somewhere there is a zero for it, somewhere there is a zero for it, and so it will be merging together. Okay, so this is how you have to plot the root locus. The five rules that we have explained, they actually give you approximate ideas. So to make it more specific, we can actually uh, have to introduce few other rules which we'll be discussing uh, article uh, 8. Point, article 8.5. Now, uh, before finishing the class, so just tell me what is your idea about this one? What is going to happen to this one? So we say that you have two pole two zero, isn't it? But the reality, is it actually going from one pole to another pole or not? That, that is the critical thing to decide. So just re remember that you have a pole at minus one and minus two, pole at minus one and minus two, and zero at uh, minus three and minus four. So if we try to draw this diagram, so if you try to draw it, what we are going to get is something like this. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So you have a zero here, you have a zero here, you have a pole here, you have a pole here. And now which segment is on the root locus? So this segment, is on the root locus because we have one only one pole here. The alternatively, this one will be on the root locus. So rest of it will not be on the root locus. Now tell me 
how they will go to their partners because starting uh, point is a pole and the ending point is a zero so basically they will again march together okay so they will be leaving this space one in through this path one through this path and then one will be going towards this one and the other one will be going towards this one okay so you got it true love always finds a path so it will leave the root locus uh, and then uh, it will relaxes then it will with a circular path it will go towards those zeros now this point where it is actually leaving is called breakaway point breakaway point and the point where it is actually meeting again so this is what is called breaking point so this is actually part of your article 8.5 so we'll be discussing in detail what are those but this is how the uh, it will behave 